This video is going to look at the different levels of classifications, how species are named using the binomial system, how to use and create um, dichotomous keys to identify a species, as well as ways of comparing species using DNA and protein sequencing rather than just looking at their morphological features. Every species can be classified into different levels of classification. Kingdoms are the largest level of classification, and, and it goes down phylum, class, genus and species. There are five kingdoms, animals, plants, fungi, protoctus and prokaryotes. Each kingdom contains multiple phyla and each phylum contains many classes. You need to um, know about two phyla in the animal kingdom, which are arthropods and chordates. Uh, chordates include the vertebrates. And these further divide into different classes. It is essential that people can identify a species by its name. Therefore, there are international rules on naming and the binomial system is used. Binomial means two names. The first name is the genus name. When you write this, it needs to be capitalized and in underlined when handwritten or in italics when typed. The species name is second and will be low, starting with a lowercase letter and again will be in italics or underlined when handwritten. Dichotomous keys uh, consists of a series of yes or no and questions allowing you to identify species by working your way through those questions. At the end, you will be able to identify the species this particular organism is. So let's look at an example. Um, the first question we'll ask is, does this animal have a tail? Well, it doesn't. So we're going down the left-hand side. And as a result, we've discounted the marmoset and the macaque as possible outcomes as for this species. The next question, does it have large ears? And a chimpanzee does, and a gorilla doesn't. So we look, and when we're looking at the ears, the, it does have ears, but it doesn't have very airbag ears compared to its head. So we know that this is a gorilla. Now we may have known beforehand that this is a gorilla, but sometimes you come across species that you've never seen before, and as a result of the, you, they're using dichotomous keys, you can still identify this species. You should be able to make your own dichotomous keys. And we're going to use an example, you trying to separate these four different um, reptiles, the alligator, the crocodile, the monitor lizard and the iguana into separate categories by a series of questions. Now when you're creating a dichotomous case you always need one fewer questions than you need than you have for animals. So if you have these four you need three questions, if you had eight animals you needed seven questions. And you always want to divide the remaining animals into groups. So it is no point say um, just picking out is it an iguana? You want something that splits the um, groups in half. So, first one that might split it in half, as an example, is does the animal have a snout with teeth on the outside? Now, the alligator and the crocodile do, but the monitor lizard and the iguana don't. So that splits the groups in half. Now we need something which splits the alligator and the crocodile, which splits the monitor lizard and the iguana. Um, the crocodile has spikes on its back, the alligator doesn't, so that would separate them out. The iguana is green, but the monitor lizard isn't, so that would separate them out. Someone could now get a picture or get an animal, um, use these questions and be able to tell whether it's a crocodile, an alligator, an iguana or a monitor lizard. So far we've looked at methods of classification which can be used by looking at the organisms from the outside. It's called morphological features uh, and they can also be behavioural features, so how the animal behaves. Because species which inhabit similar niches, say they all live in a pond or they all live underground, um, in a, in a similar ecosystems have similar adaptations. Sometimes people confuse um, a convergent uh, evolution, so an evolution where you get the same characteristics with um, actual being related to each other. A more precise method at look, of looking at the evolutionary relationships between organisms is by looking at uh, molecules inside the organisms, particularly the sequence of uh, DNA and protein. To understand how this works, we need to have some idea for what DNA actually is. Um, it works similarly for protein. But in DNA there's a long chain of bases and there are four bases, A, G, C and T. And they're in a random sequence, although the sequence determines um, the protein sequence the gene codes for. Now DNA sequences change over time due to mutations. And species that are more closely related to each other we have DNA that has a more similar sequence than species that are more distantly related. In this example, you can see that species 2 has two um, differences with species 1, whereas species 3 has five differences in its sequence with species 1. As a result, 
we can say that species 1 and 2 are more closely related to each other than species 1 is to species 